Okay, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at actually getting our game up and running, importing the packages that were required, and we even played the game to have a look around what it was like. Um, so everyone should have actually played on that track at least once to know what it's like. Um, the things that we're going to be adding to it is things like finish lines and, and messages and timekeepers. So the very first thing we're going to work on is our finish line. So with the complete scene track open, you'll actually be able to go down and let's find our car on the track. Now you can actually look for it manually or you can find it in your hierarchy window and then pressing F or focus on that. So I reckon our finish line can, we'll, we'll put our finish line here just so it's in between something so we know exactly where it is. So we'll just put it around here. So what do we need for our finish line? Well, we need something to collide with. So let's treat it as a brick wall for now. Let's hit a brick wall and let's consider that our race finished. So to create a brick wall, or some, a wall of its type, we need to create a cube. And to do that, we're going to go to Game Object, Create Other, and just go down to Cube. And the very first thing you'll see is it is a very, very smallish cube, and it's not very big, because if I put that down on the road, I might actually miss that, which isn't going to be the best thing. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and let's just rotate that one, make that a nice round number and I'm going to go through and scale it with the scale tool up here or by pressing R on my keyboard and I'm going to scale it in one direction. I don't need to grab that white one because that will scale it in all directions. As you'll see if I do that it scales it in everywhere and I'm going to scale it upwards as well. Now remember it is also scaling underneath but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So now we can see that we now have our wonderful finish line in between here. Now it doesn't look that great because you don't want finish lines and so let's just play test. Let's see if this wall works like a wall. So let's go play test and we slam it into that wall. We can't actually get a white round from it. So let's try that again. No. So that's actually working not exactly like a finish line does. You haven't seen a car race where once they get to the finish line all the cars slam into a wall however fun that might be. So what we actually need to do is we need to set this cube up as a trigger. Now the very first thing I'm going to do before I do that is rather than calling it a cube, let's make it something a little bit more understandable and let's call it finish line. And I can do that up in my inspector window. Scrolling down in my inspector window, I should be able to find a component that's called a collider. Now for a cube, it will be a box collider it can be any type of collider this works for. So I'm just going to go through and expand my box collider. In here, you'll actually see an option to check through of if it's a trigger. We can actually select on this and that will actually allow us to drive through it. For material, that's what it's going to look like. Um, at the moment, it's got none, which is the standard gray and what position different bits and pieces are. But for the moment, that's what we need. So if I hit play now, Nothing graphically has changed, but I've actually changed that box collider, which is the box going around this cube, to be a trigger, which means I can drive straight through it, just like a finish line. Now, granted, it is white, and you don't usually see a invisible or a visible white finish line like that. We'll fix that up towards the end. For the moment, whilst we're actually creating the game, I'm actually going to leave it on purely because I need to be able to see where the finish line is. But just if you're curious, it's actually a component, not the box collider, but the mesh renderer. If I turn the mesh renderer off, the box is still there. And if you very carefully zoom in, you might be able to make out parts of the collider. So you can actually see that collider there now, but with the mesh renderer selected, we can turn that on and off. Now one thing I did actually re just realize was when I actually changed the name of the cube I didn't hit enter and save that properly so I'm just going to reset that one to finish line and hit enter to make sure that holds in my hierarchy. So from here we actually need to have something happen so when I actually go play and that's something I forgot I'll just turn that mesh renderer back on so I can see where I, my finish line actually is as I'm driving forward, nothing actually happens. Now you'll notice that my car is just behind my finish line. 
that's so I don't have to drive around the track each time. So from here, we actually need to get something to happen um, when we cross our finish line. How can we do that? Well, we can do that with something called a script. And our script is actually going to go through and tell us exactly what it needs to do. So with my finish line selected, I'm going to go through to add component. And I'm actually going to go and create a new script. And let's call this one trigger. Because when it crosses the finish line, I want it to trigger something. I'm going to leave the language as JavaScript, and I'm going to go create and add. Now you'll notice two things that occur. The very first one is trigger has now got a, it's got a new trigger script there under the finish line. The other thing you'll notice is in your main assets window, you'll notice that trigger file has just become there in our main assets window. It hasn't gone into the scripts folder, and the reason for that is because Unity doesn't know where you want to put that script and multiple things have multiple scripts and depending on your organizing system is how it works. We're actually going to leave that trigger script there for now, but select finish line and we can actually double click on this trigger script and it will actually go through and open up our coding editor. In this case, it's mono develop. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to tell Unity is when there is a trigger event, so when it goes through that finish line, we want it to say, you win. So we can actually ignore, be careful when you're actually in these different uh, mono develop. Occasionally you'll get previous scripts or scripts that you're not using. So for instance, this game two, that's an, one that I have never edited that's popped up. And same with the waypoint circuits. Uh, that one was one I was looking at earlier. So the trigger.js is what we created. So trigger is the name of the script I gave and JS stands for JavaScript. First thing first, I'm just going to go through and delete everything out of there and just rewrite it myself because it is purely a lot easier in that regard. So the very first thing I want to do is let's create a function and let's just use the update function for now and see what happens. So I'm going to open and close my parentheses before I even start typing code because it's good uh, coding practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go debug.log and debug.log is actually going to place a message saying you crossed the finish line. So whenever you type a debug, it means that it's when you're actually testing it and trying to figure out if things are working or not. When it's got the debug.log, it means in Unity, it's going to appear down in this status bar here and also in your console window. And you can see in the open brackets, you'll actually see quotation marks. And if you remember, when something's inside quotation marks, like you cross the finish line, it means it's a string or it's text that will be displayed. So from here, I'm going to actually go through and I'll save that just by going file, save, and go back to Unity. And you'll see that I've actually forgotten a semicolon on line three. So you can actually see from this error message, it's expecting a semicolon, insert a semicolon at the end. So this is Unity's guess of what it's missing. Usually it's pretty good with a semicolon guessing. So now that we'll resave that with Control S or File Save. Just make sure that one's disabled once you've actually saved it. And you'll see that error message clears after a little while. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit play. And you'll see down in my console window, I haven't crossed the finish line yet, but it says I have. So what's wrong with that? Even when we cross the finish line, it still keeps going. You can see all the messages building up very, very quickly. So we need to actually have a look at our code a little bit better. And let's actually have a look at this function update. So an update function occurs every single frame your computer is displaying. That's not what we want. We only want it to occur when the car crosses the finish line. So from there, what we're going to do is we're actually going to change that function to become something called on trigger enter. So an on trigger enter function will actually tell us exactly when a trigger something enters the trigger. So when something enters this cube, it's going to start that little bit of code in here. So let's save it. 
So we'll go back and file, save. If it is grayed out like that, it means you haven't made any changes to it. And it's ready to go. So I'm just going to clear my console window and hit play. Already you'll see that there's no messages popping up, which is great. But let's just see if there's a, it's going to actually go through our finish line. And as soon as we've crossed the finish line, you'll actually see that we've got a couple of messages uh, going through. And there's a reason for that. So rather than the reason why we received two was if we actually look at the car quickly, we'll actually see all the different components that make up the car. Now, on the main section of the car, you won't actually see any colliders. However, if you go down to and look in the children of that object, you'll see a collider bottom, which if we focus down on that car, you'll see the bottom of the car, and then you'll see the top of the car collider as well. And the way that this works is because we've got two colliders colliding with one trigger collider, that's why we're getting the two messages. The way we're going to code this, it's not actually going to matter for us. So what we need to do now is we actually need to get it to be a little bit better going through. Is we actually need to go through and change this message because you cross the finish line appearing down the bottom here, the player is not actually going to see that. The only thing the player is going to see is exactly what's in this game screen window. Anything outside it, they're not going to see. So in the next video, we'll actually look at changing over the uh, what that is actually saying and really get something going other than just the I cross the finish line in a debug message. Just make sure that if you want to practice learning how to use triggers, uh, definitely keep trying around. And if you do have any issues, please don't hesitate to ask.